Hi boys and girls. Yesterday, the world of children's literature lost one of the greatest children's authors and illustrators um, of the last several decades. And his name was Tommy DePaula. And he was 85 years old. And he died um, due to complications from a head injury that he sustained last year, or excuse me, last week. Um, Tommy DePaula is one of my absolute favorite authors and illustrators, and I would like to share some of them with you today. He is very famous for the way that he did his artwork, and I believe that when I show his artwork to you, you're going to be um, thinking, yeah, I've seen that before. Just the way that he um, drew his pictures was very unique, and you can always tell if it was a Tommy DePaula book. So what I would like to do is um, read you a little bit about Tommy DePaula, and then I'm going to read um, some of his books to you and show you some others that I have. And then um, you can do some further research on your own. So I'm going to read to you, um, I have it here on my phone, from his website. And if you want to learn more about Tommy DePaula and his books, um, and I hope you grow to love him as much as I do, you can go to his website. It's Tommy.com, T-O-M-I-E. Dot com. And on here there is a biography about him and more information about his work. So this is straight from his website, Tommy.com. Tommy DePaula is best known for his books for children. He has written and illustrated over 270 books, including Stregonona, Tommy DePaula's Mother Goose, Oliver Burton is Sissy, and 26 Fairmont Avenue. Nearly 25 million copies of his books have been sold. His newest books are Quiet Wings, by Cheryl Klein, and I Will Talk to You, Little One, by Phyllis Grant. So some of his books he just was the illustrator for. Flight of the Night was first published in 1968, and in a new edition this spring was God is Great, God is Good, by Sana Anderson Baker, and it was first published in 1987. Tommy DePaula and his work has been recognized with the Smithson Medal from the Smithsonian Institute and the Society of Illustrators Original Art Show Lifetime Achievement Award. The American Library Association honored him with a Caldecott Honor and Newbery Honor Awards and the Children's Literature Legacy Award called the Laura Ingalls Wilder Award until June of 2018 for substantial and lasting contribution to literature for children. The Pratt Institute and Georgetown University, among others, have granted him honorary doctoral degrees. Pratt Institute in 2012 named him one of the top 125 Pratt icons of all time. In 1999, he was selected for the New Hampshire Governor's Art Award for a Living Treasure. And Tommy DePaula lived in New Hampshire. So um, just want to go over what some of the books that I have here. So two of the books that I own of Tommy DePaula are at school, and they are... Um, Jamie O'Rourke and the Puka, and Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato, and they are St. Patrick's Day books, so I have them at school. Um, but here's some other ones that I have that you might be interested in finding. This is Tommy DePaula's 26 Fairmont Avenue, and this is um, his memoir. So this is a story sort of about his life and about growing up. So this is um, one of his, a chapter book that he's written. This book is called Charlie Needs a Cloak and he was written and illustrated this book. This one is really cool. It's called Pancakes for Breakfast. I remember this book from when I was little, and what I really loved about this book is very unique. It is called a wordless picture book, which means it's all pictures. There are no words involved. So you get to sort of create the words and the stories in your mind. So again, that book is called Pancakes for Breakfast. Stregonona is one of Tommy DePaula's most popular characters. And so this book is called Stregonona Takes a Vacation. And she has um, a grandson or nephew, I believe, and his name is Big Anthony. And he is always getting into trouble, and she's trying to keep him out of trouble. This book is one of my absolute favorites, and it's called Tommy the Paula Joy to the World. And this book is um, Christmas stories and songs, and he retold some of the some very popular stories. Um, if you're in my third grade, we read The Legend of the Poinsettia 
every year. Okay, so you might be um, familiar with that. So you can see it says that he retold these stories. So th these are stories that are passed down through generation. And he just illustrated them. Same thing with songs. So you see there's music at the bottom, but he illustrated them. Another one similar is Tommy DePaula's Mother Goose. So these are very popular stories um, that many people are already familiar with. Because they're, they're, they're called Mother Goose Tales. Um, and he retold them and illustrated them. So it's just all full of all these very popular stories. Old King Cole is one of them. Um, some nursery rhymes, Hush Little Baby. Even some um, simple things, Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and so are you. He has them all illustrated. So that's a really lovely story. Another one that I have here is called, I've never read this one, Bonjour, Mr. Sati. And this is about um, a cat that lives in Paris. Okay. So I would like to read um, one or two of these to you today. So I'm going to um, start with this one. Charlie needs a cloak. A cloak is something that you wear. It's like a shawl or um, sort of like a robe. Okay, so here we go. Charlie needs a cloak. I'm trying to see if I can find a publishing date on this one, but I cannot. We'll have to look it up. Charlie was a shepherd. He had a cozy house, a big hat, a crook, and a flock of fat sheep. But everyone said, Charlie needs a cloak. Oh, here we go. This book was published in 1973. There it is. Poor Charlie. He really needed a new cloak. So you can see his cloak is all torn and tattered. So in the spring, Charlie sheared his sheep, which means that they, they shaved them. It's like getting a haircut. And he carded the wool to straighten it out. Then Charlie spud the wood, wool into yarn. Charlie wanted a red cloak, so he picked some pokeweed berries during the late summer and boiled them over a fire. Then Charlie dyed the, red, the yarn red in the berry juice. After the yarn was dry, Charlie put the strands on a loom. And every fall evening, he wove the yarn into cloth. Charlie put the cloth on the table and cut it into pieces. He pinned the pieces together. This is something that Tommy DePaula often does where he creates a scene of different pic uh, pictures so you can see multiple things that are happening. Sort of like a comic strip. And he sewed them. And then when winter came, Charlie had a beautiful new red cloak. So just a very simple story, um, probably written just um, for younger readers who are just starting out, because these are some really simple words in here. Okay, here's the one that I said I haven't read yet, and I would love that for you to be the first one I'm reading it with. Okay, so this one is called Bonjour, Mr. Sati. And you know Miss Laracy loves cats, so I'm sure this will be a good one for me. Okay, so it starts out here with a, a postcard, and it says, Dear niece and nephew, my traveling companion, Porsuke, and I will be arriving from Paris very spoon, soon to spend the summer with all of you. What adventures I have to tell you about your Uncle Sati. And this is written to Rosie and Carol Abbey in um, Centerville, Midwest. All right, let's see. <clears throat> Ever since the postcard arrived from Paris, Rosalie and Conrad had been waiting for the arrival of their uncle, Mr. Sati, the world traveler, and his compa companion, Forsuke Follette. Every day they asked Mom and Papa when they would arrive. Hello, hello, Uncle Sati, cried Rosalie and Conrad. Hello, hello, Mr. Forsuke Follette. Hello, hello, everyone, cried the visitors, and they all hugged and kissed and went inside. Now that we're here, my dears, Mr. Sati said, 
Forti is going to cook us fabulous French dinner. A special recipe from Alice and Gertrude, our dear American friends living in Paris, said Forti. And off went he went to the kitchen. What adventures did you have on this trip, Uncle Sati? Rosalie and Conrad asked. Well, mes enfants, which means my children in French. Do you remember my friend Pablo, who painted that portrait of me in blue? Well, his new paintings are very different. They caused quite a stir in Paris this spring. Oh, tell us, tell us, cried the children. Well, it all began the Sunday we arrived in Paris. Forti and I were sitting in our favorite cafe when who should come along but Pablo. Pablo, come and join us. What have you been up to? Pablo was always up to something. Ah, Sati, Pablo said. I have been painting many things. I went from blue to pink, from pink to things African, and now my paintings show things from different sides all the same. My goodness, Pablo, said Forti, how daring. I can't imagine how they look. I must see your newest painting, said Mr. Sati. And you shall, you shall, indeed you shall, said a large woman who had come up from behind them. It was Gertrude with her friend Alice. Nothing delighted Gertrude and Alice more than to bump into old friends. Come with us to Rue de Flores for our Sunday night gathering, Gertrude said. Tonight, Pablo will show you his new work. Oh, do, oh, do, oh, please do, said Alice. All of Paris was interested in art. Gertrude's salon, for that is what a Sunday night gathering was called, was the place where the interesting people came to discuss interesting things. Everyone was glad to see Mr. Sati. Bonjour, Mr. Sati. Bonjour means hello in French. The salon was already filled with people. Oh, how they talked, how they laughed, and how they argued. Suddenly, everyone was quiet. Henri had came in. Henri was a painter, too. He looked in like a little bank clerk. Henri, 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 said Gertrude. You are back from Nice so soon. Nice is in the south of France. Was Nice nice? Yes, Gertrude, Henri said. Nice was nice, and I did have some nice paintings in Nice. I have brought them to show you. Pablo glowed, glowered. Oh, dear Sati, Forti whispered. I smell trouble, but I'm going to show my new paintings tonight, said Pablo. Gertrude said I should. Pablo put his paintings against one wall. Henri put his paintings against the other. Everyone stared start, and started talking at once, taking sides. Pablo is brilliant. Henri is boring, shouted the group. Henri is a genius. Pablo is weird, shouted the other group. Oh, 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 said Alice. A duel, the Russian prince shouted. A prize fight, yelled the American writer. Call the Genderom, screamed Pablo's wife. Enough, 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 bellowed Gertrude, and they all stopped at once. So it seems they were arguing about who was better. We shall have a contest, Gertrude announced. Pablo and Henri will hang their paintings in Monsieur V's gallery, and someone will judge them. But who will be the judge, said the lady poet from England. Well, Fleur de Florette spoke up. There is one among us who not only knows about paintings, but is fair and honest and true. And that is my dear friend, Mr. Sati. Yes, 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 said Gertrude, and everyone agreed. All of Paris buzzed. All of Paris was interested. All of Paris held its breath. The day of the judging arrived. Gertrude and Alice, Pablo and Henri, and Forti, accompanied by Mr. Sati to the gallery. A huge crowd followed. Reporters from the newspapers were there. Monsieur V greeted and the crowd and led Mr. Sati inside. Here he is looking at the paintings. Hmm, which do you like better? I kind of like these ones. I like the yellow. Finally, Mr. Sati appeared in the door. Well, Sati, Gertrude said, after careful consideration, said Mr. Sati, I have concluded that to compare Henri's paintings of Mise to Paolo's paintings of newspapers, guitars, and faces from all different sides would like be would be like comparing apples and oranges. Both are delicious, but taste totally different. Pablo and Henri's paintings are both delicious, and they look totally different. I declare the contest a draw. The crowd cheered. Vive Pablo! Vive Henri! Vive Mr. Sati! So a draw means a tie. 
So he said that it wouldn't be fair to judge them because they're both beautiful, but they're just different. They're too different to judge. I think that's fair. Gertrude and Alice gave Mr. Sati big kisses because Pablo, because he had saved the day. After all, they loved both Henri and Pablo. Pablo and Henri shook hands with each other and then with Mr. Sati. The crowd cheered and lifted Henri, Pablo, and Mr. Sati onto their shoulders and marched down the boulevard to the cafe where they had a party. So, you can see that art is alive and well in Paris, said Mr. Sati. Rosalie and Conrad clapped their hands. Dinner's ready, announced Forti. And they all went into the dining room and sat down for a delicious meal. And now for some presents, said Mr. Sati. Paint sets, shouted Conrad. From Paris, Rosalie said. And tomorrow we will go out and paint together, said Mr. Sati. And every day for the rest of the visit, Mr. Sati, Rosalie, and Conrad painted their pictures. And this book leaves us with um, an author's note, which I love an author's note. So that means that there's something more that the author wants to tell us. So this is Tommy DePaula speaking to us. He says, during his lifetime, my good friend, Mr. Sati, traveled all over the world and had many adventures. I am honored that he chose me to pass them on to you. If some of the people he meets in his journeys look or sound familiar, I'm not the least bit surprised. So Mr. Sati was actually a real person who was a friend of Tommy DePaula who lended this story about how he was asked to judge an art contest to Tommy and he put it into this beautifully written and um, illustrated tale. So I really think that, that what they're trying to teach us is that all art is beautiful and it's so hard to judge what would be you know, better or worse than the other. I know that I had an opinion which one I liked better, but to say that the other one wasn't good wouldn't be fair. So I have a little challenge for you. Um, in honor of Tommy DePaula and his passing, I would like you to get out all of your art supplies and I want you to just draw what you believe is the most beautiful drawing that you could ever think of. You could do it in different squares, like a scene, uh, maybe like a comic strip. Um, you could have some animals in it dressed up as humans, or it could be... Um, an illustration of a story, like how Tommy DePaula illustrated different Mother Goose tales. Um, you could create your own wordless picture book, like Tommy DePaula. You could come up with your own popular character, like he did with Streg and Nona. Or you could even illustrate some things that are happening in your life, like Tommy did in his biography. I hope that you enjoyed um, learning a little bit about one of my favorite authors, Tommy DePaula. Again, if you want more information about him, you can go online to his website, tomie.com. Bye. See you next time.